Evidently, Filbert was not a man to make empty promises. No. When I awoke in the morning, it was hardly the morning that I grew accustomed to. Instead of lying on the deli table, I was in shorts, under comfy and warm blankets in my own bedroom. It was almost foreign to me, if not for the years of memories in that room. However, when I walked down the stairs, the eerie scent of deli air crept into my house through the television set like some sort of sick portal. My parents were staring at the news, holding their breath like the world hadn't seen since 9-11. Once I was in range, I could hear the voice of the local news anchor shakily reading from the board. Local business, Jolly's Urban Market, was the target of a terrorist attack today as the building was blown to the ground by what appears to have been several IEDs placed inside the building. The number of confirmed casualties are in the 70s and rising, as local emergency services dig through the rubble in search of any survivors. My parents then turned to look at me, with an expected confusion that almost beckoned me to give them an explanation. When I gave them a small, what the fuck? They reacted like it was very much not the answer that they were looking for. Before I knew it, an argument between the three of us blew up inside my house. They accused me of doing the deed, as it was extremely coincidental that I finally get a day off and this happens. The argument was quickly cut short by the sound of sirens blaring and a knock at the front door. I managed to get out to Texas before the police had me in handcuffs and in the back of their police cruiser. The first text was to Tim, which went something like this, and in high sight, probably made things worse. Tim, I don't know if they got to you first or not, but I need you to take down the stories, the Reddit ones, all of them. I'm going to try and take down the YouTube ones. I think they're going to trace them back and pin this all on me. The second text I got out would thankfully save my ass later but we'll get to that when the time comes. It makes for a better story that way. Now, police interrogations do not go how the media depicts them. No. There was no good cop, bad cop scenario. There was no threats and no yelling. There wasn't even a bright desk lamp that they put in your face. Instead, I was sitting in a room when a person from the force simply came in and had a nice calm conversation with me, jotting down things in a folder as we went. It stayed calm for over an hour before a man that I can only assume was the police chief got tired of the lack of progress and simply bogus things that I admitted about the store. Eventually, the police chief himself came in to talk to me, and the conversation went anything but well. Now, kid, you know you're basically suspect number one in this, right? The police chief seemed to talk with an accent of shit-eating confidence. Naturally, I hated it, so I decided to play along like I always do. Really? Me? Despite Filbert literally repeatedly calling and threatening the store? Or what about the attacks from Stanley that you guys seem to brush off as animal attacks? This actually caught him off guard, but the thing he said next really sent shivers down my spine. Look, we've heard over and over again about this Stanley character, but who the hell is Philbert? You know, Philbert, the part-timer that we called you about over the mass, um, animal attacks when we got stuck in the freezer? Again, he just stared at me for an uncomfortable amount of time before saying, We don't have any record of this Filbert character working there, or any sort of police call, kid. It seems like any records that the business may have had conveniently went up in flames with the building. And with that being said, I began mentally crapping my pants. So, you want us to believe that the culprit was in fact 
a mysterious part-timer who doesn't show up in the state's records, had all of his so-called paperwork blown up in the establishment that was conveniently blown to smithereens on the one and only day that you were off, out of the four or so months straight that you've worked non-stop. With a blank face, I simply gave the man a firm, Yes, before he began pinching the bridge of his nose in frustration. Sir, we found your blog post on that radit or ribbit or whatever. You had someone comment about a week ago, and I quote, You could always burn the place down, left arrow three, and then something about throwing a barracuda into the ceiling. The man actually said left arrow three and not heart, which made things almost funny if not extremely dire. Shortly after, there was a knock on the door. I turned to see a man in a long black duster jacket. I had no idea who this man was until he spoke, and the voice filled me with relief. The second text message arrived in the right place. The man was the agent, here to save my bacon. His voice boomed with an authority that made the police chief metaphorically shit himself, and maybe physically too. I wasn't paying enough attention. My name is Agent Lance, and your suspect is coming with me. Before the police chief even had the chance to respond, the agent flashed a badge with an almost oil slick sheen, and a few armed guards with symbols that I had never seen before were dragging me out of the interrogation room. And when I say dragging... I mean literally dragging me, chair and all. When the police chief got done shitting his pants, he dropped the key to my cuffs in the floor grate by accident. Rather than waiting around for him to find more keys, they picked me up, chair and all, and began dragging me out. I mean, who puts grated floors in an interrogation room anyway? Is it to catch the liquid when people pee their pants? Once we were outside and in the back of a black van, one of the guards began rooting around before retrieving a pair of bolt cutters. Well, another guard started with the cuff lock with the coolest lock pick that I had ever seen. The agent then turned to me and offered a hand to shake, announcing his name once again to me before awkwardly changing his extended hand to the one that wasn't cuffed to the chair. I already liked this guy. The name's Lance, kid, and you sure got yourself in a pickle back there, huh? Uh, yeah, and not even the good kind, like Dill. That was some bread and butter bullshit. The agent then smiled. Evidently, he also seemed to like me, too. Once the cuffs were off, a third guard came out of the police station and returned my handgun to me. That's when I felt the most awful pain that I've ever felt in my back. It was like all my muscles, all at once, just shit their pants and began flailing on their own. Once it stopped, I turned over to see the agent holding a taser. Part of the job requires that you be tased, like being a security guard. I figured I'd just get it out of the way now so we can get to work quicker. After flipping the agent the bird, we began driving. Where to, kid? Well, um, I guess my house for some new pants and to get my gear. But after that, hell if I know.